On a day here in Utah, I got a phone call that said my son was in the hospital, uh, that he had overdosed. What's his dad? I can do that. Okay. She's my cousin. So Seth had overdosed and was lying immobile for nine hours between his bed and the wall. And it turns out that when you're completely immobile, circulation cuts off to different parts of your body. And that is how many people die. And that's what almost killed Seth. Live happily ever after. The end. When I went into the emergency room and saw his eyes rolling around in his head and heard him muttering incoherently, it was devastating. Dad. I tried to hold Seth's hands, but, but felt so angry and so hopeless and so terrified that at times I'd have to walk out of the room, but then would come back in, just thinking that perhaps proximity would help me protect him from death. We were floored, we were flattened. We just had absolutely no idea how to deal with this. From the beginning, he loved to fish growing up. We spent a lot of time out on streams and lakes. He was precocious, he was bright, he was fun, he was interested in people. We just worried about his future, where he wanted to change, but he didn't know how to in those moments. I believed as a parent that my job was to help them to become a certain kind of person, and it never was, because I wanted it more than he was, and I tried to impose my will on him. I've gained a lot more patience with the process of change. Ultimately, they had to open up the wound, they eventually removed muscle, and he's now permanently disabled. Uh, walks with a limp, but walks. He has struggles in his life, but he has a life. He's alive. This 10-year saga with Seth changed me probably as much as it changed him. So I spent my career studying human behavior, why people do what they do and how to help them change. And at first, I think I was a little arrogant about this. When Seth started struggling, I thought, you know what? I've got access to the smartest people in the world who know how to lick something like this. Two vital smarts principles were very helpful to me. The first is crucial conversations, and that was important all the way through. I found that the most important thing I could do was create safety and connection. But the second was the six sources of influence. I came to appreciate that while those do help us understand why people are doing what they're doing, you can't impose them on anyone. You can't make somebody else change. You can be an influence, but you can never have control. So the best way to increase your influence is to surrender the illusion of control. I think I finally relaxed about a year ago. And we had the sweetest, most wonderful conversation. That was probably the moment for me that I finally let go and that I finally said, this is who you are now. The measure of my soul is my ability to love imperfect people. That change isn't my job. My job is love and support. And do the principles of Vital Smarts help me to have a perfect life? I think what they've helped me do is redefine perfection. Seth is a hero of mine. He is one of the most compassionate, empathic people in the world. And now that he's got his head clear and knows who he is, he's using that to make a difference in many, many lives. I love my son. <laughs>